up with all of our crab gear and our Florida boat on top of our car. And we are headed over to Everett uh, to the 10th Street boat launch to launch our boat so we can go crabbing today. And it only took us about 45 minutes. It's about a 40 mile drive north of Seattle. And we took I-5 pretty much all the way up here. And uh, we're actually almost at the boat launch right now, but it's, uh, yeah, it only took us 45 minutes. And that's, you know, the fantastic thing about being in the Seattle area is there's so many opportunities for us to go fishing or shell fishing. And today we're gonna be going crabbing, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, we're actually arriving at the boat launch now, and we're hoping that, um, we got here a little late. It's almost 11 a.m. right now. And we were hoping to get here around 10, but hopefully um, there isn't too many, there's not too much boat traffic coming in and out right now. Here's all the cars parked on the side with all their trailers. And the main, the visitor parking without, so if you don't have a, um, a trailer with you, then all the parking is over here to the left. Here's the pay station if you got a trailer. And here's the main boat launch area. Uh, we usually just, we have a small rowboat that's only 12 feet, so we usually park in the first lane over here and launch our boat. But you can see all the different lanes going down. up we launched our boat at the Everett 10th Street boat launch and we're just heading out of the marina right now for the boat launch and we're heading uh, the first part uh, that you hit is the is the Everett jetty so I'm just gonna follow kind of this boat out and, we're, and uh, the crabbing grounds is just south of the jetty area so uh, we're gonna be kind of cruising out uh, probably for the next 30 minutes or so. It takes a little while to like, get outside of the jetty, but uh, thankfully today uh, the water here is a lot calmer than the first time we're here. Uh, the first time we're here, uh, they probably had one, maybe two foot uh, waves or wake that was coming through here. And it's because there's so many boats and there's a little wind coming through, and it's almost like an echo chamber coming through this jetty because the waves just go bounce from side to side and. Um, it, it did get a little um, hairy when we were coming out here. Uh, we're actually taking on water in our bow, and um, I think Cat got a little nervous uh, being on this small boat and and um, getting that water come in. But today's yeah, it was real. It's much nicer. It's really calm. You can see it's really nice. It's a beautiful day today. Um, we have all of our crab gear on the boat. We have three pots. Uh, we could actually have four, because you could have, uh, in Washington State, you have two pieces of crab gear per person. But we only have three, because frankly, we only have room for three pots. You can see like how, how cramped it is. We barely have room for the three pots that we have, or the three traps that we have. But, now it looks like it's a great day. Uh, we're just gonna be heading out. Uh, again, we're gonna go south of, uh, to the south side of the jetty, and then it's only maybe a, another quarter mile or so from there uh, before we get to the crabbing ground. So let's get out there right now. Okay, so we just got through the jetty. Uh, it actually didn't take us that long. Luckily, uh, there weren't too many boats going through that were going fast. Uh, when you're going through the jetty, it's actually a no-wake zone. 
and you can get ticketed uh, if you do produce a wig. So when you're going through, uh, you know, the boats coming in and out need to be going slow so that they're actually not producing a visible wave uh, off their uh, motor. Uh, so we just got past uh, the end of the jetty. So we're into the no wake zone, so we go a little faster. And we're actually not too far from the crabbing grounds now too. Uh, basically, once we're out of the jetty, you just take a left and there's some piers over there and uh, that's where a lot of the buoys are. So it should be maybe another 15 minutes or so and we should be at the crabbing grounds. Okay, so we just got to the crabbing grounds. We're just south of the Everett Jetty and boat launch. Okay, so we got the first protocol pot all baited up. We just put chicken in the bait box and you can see this is the RV size protocol uh, slip ring. You can see on the side walls they come up and down when you pull it. That's why they call this a slip ring. So it's a hybrid between a crab pot and a standard ring. But the interesting thing about on the smaller pot is the bait box. They actually mount it on the top of the of this uh, or the slip of this slip ring so and I, I just kept it there I usually mount the, the bait box to the bottom so we'll see how this works this is the second time we used it we used it actually last night at the Edmonds Pier uh, we caught a couple crab in it but nothing legal size but uh, we're over here in Everett today so we're gonna see how this works today we're, uh, we're gonna drop it down right now and we got our GoPro set it's recording and we're only in 50 feet of water but we're gonna just drop it here and see how it goes Okay, so it's been 15 minutes. We're gonna pick up the, the RV size protocol slip ring right now. Uh, luckily, it's only in 50 feet of water, so we don't have to pull it too far. Seems a little longer. Oh wow! Whoa! Check that out. That's, That's a big dungeon right there. Whoa! 
Is it, hopefully that's a hopefully that's a male. Yeah. Let's check out on this size this this one here first. Oh, careful, careful. This one's too small. This one's not letting go. Okay, so this is a um, a red rock crab. You can tell by the deep coloration, the red, and then the black tips and the pinchers. And let's. Do you think we need to turn around? Yeah, this is well over five inches. So this is a good keeper red rock crab. And let's just um, see if it's a hard shell. Yep. Thanks. Yep. I'm testing it. Uh, you test the front, kind of right underneath this claw, to see if it's if it's firm and a hard shell, and it is. Otherwise, you could also pinch the second pincher here, um, and it's firm here too. So this is a good crab. Ooh, male girl! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay, so here's the Dungeness crab that we got. It's huge, and it's actually a male because you can see the narrow um, abdomen area, and if you measure it. It needs to be six and a quarter inches, and it's well past six and a quarter. This is probably close to a seven inch crab. It's really big, but unfortunately, uh, it has to be hard shell. And when you uh, test these out, you could uh, press right here at the top of the shell, and it's and slightly soft, or you could press this, this pincher here, and you can see it's, it's slightly squishy. You don't want to press too hard but it's not quite hard shell yet. So we're gonna have to return this uh, crab back. But it's a beautiful crab. Shame to let her go, or let him go, but um, uh, yeah, soft shell. It's slightly soft shell. This should probably be good in probably about two weeks or so. So we just got our first keeper red rock crab out here in Everett. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, here's the aerator bucket that I made. And I'm just gonna set this up with some water to keep this crab nice and fresh. Once you fill up the bucket, you just turn on the aerator. And you can start seeing it make bubbles right now. This is great for keeping the crabs nice and fresh. And now I can just put the lid on top. Make sure that the water doesn't leak out. Okay, so we got our Easy Polar Crab Keeper Pot all baited up. You see that? We got some salmon, a salmon head in there put some drumsticks around and uh, we put in a, a little bait box. That bait box actually doesn't come with this pot. It actually comes with a cylinder bait box that comes all the way to the top. Uh, but I asked them to remove that and I just put in my own bait box. That way I could use my GoPro and have a clear line of sight to all the different uh, ramps coming in. Uh, so we're in about 50 feet of water out here. Uh, it's not too deep, but we're just gonna set it and then uh, see how it goes. We're probably gonna leave it down there for about an hour or so.
Okay, we're rolling into our, uh, our actual crab pot this time. We have been pulling up just rings the entire time so far. But this is the our easy puller uh, crab keeper pot. This is the first time uh, we've actually, actually the second time that we used it. We used it last night at a fishing pier. But really this is made for fishing in deeper water. There's Dungeness crab, uh, some bigger crab around. And it's been in the water for probably maybe an hour and a half by now. Um, but these crab, but these pots fish actually pretty fast because they have the ramps, uh, the three ramps on uh, the three sides of the pot. And hopefully it's not too heavy. It's definitely more work pulling up a crab pot versus those rings. <clears throat> this is why everyone buys those pot pullers. Hold on, some crab in here, baby. Look at that. Wow. That looks good, huh? That's a male right there. That looks like a good size, so hopefully he's... Um, hopefully he's a hard shell. Oh. And this is a great pot because you get to see the difference between some of the red rocks oops, and the Dungeness. The Dungeness are that lighter purple color and the red rock crabs are the, the red colored ones, the deeper red color. All right, victory! So we finally got our first keeper Dungeness crab off this boat. We got it in the in the Easy Polar Crab Keeper pot. Really happy about that. Uh, it actually fished really fast. We had a lot of crab in here. It's amazing. Uh, but this is a male crab. It's well over six and a quarter inches. And I checked the shell. It's a nice hard shell. So this is definitely a keeper. And I'm really happy about that. It's a great crab. See that? Really excited about this. It's great to have it. I mean, we love going out to the like Edmonds Pier, Marco Teo, and all these different piers in the Seattle area to get these crab, but it's usually red rock crab. So it's fantastic just to get uh, one of these Dungeness crab out here. Uh, you can tell uh, these are nice big, big crab. And we're gonna put in the aerator here. So we already got, we already got three red rock crab in here that are keepers. We're gonna put this Dungeness crab in here now. Nice big crab. Okay, we're gonna sit this pot again, try to get some more. Okay, so here's the Protoco RV uh, size uh, slip ring. We're about to set it again. We are actually a little further out, but we weren't getting any crabs, so we're getting a little closer to the pier again just to see if there's more crab moving in. Uh, it's actually uh, almost, um, I think high tide tonight is around seven o'clock, and it's a little after five right now, so it's a flood tide coming in. So they might be kind of moving closer to this area, so we're just gonna set it here and uh, hopefully we get some luck. And if you pan around here, it's kind of have all, it has all these docks here in Everett, and I think a lot of the crab are attracted here because it's, uh, it's kind of acts as like a little bit of a bay. So I think a lot of the crab are congregating just in this area. So if you're ever crabbing out there and you see like a little inlet or a bay, it could be a good uh, chance to be some crab. And yeah, we're only in 50 feet of water, so it's shallow.
Okay, so we are rolling up to our other uh, protocol pod. This is the smaller RV size. This has actually been more productive for us today. So it's been working really well. Here it is right here. Cat's been getting a good workout. Yeah, it's a lot of work pulling up these pots, especially by hand, even though we're only in 50 feet of water. You know, we're pulling up, um, these pots are around 12 pounds, 10, 12 pounds, plus, you know, they have bait, and all plus all the rope and all the water resistance that's happening. So, by the time the pot's coming up, you're definitely um, feeling like you're getting a workout. Easier way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is none. Yeah. No, you just gotta pull it. Yeah, try to keep your back straight and upright, you know. Just use your arms. Ooh, looks like there's some pretty good sized red rocks in there. Ooh, there's, let me see. Yeah. There's some crab. That's just some bark. Like some three, three red rock in here. Whoa. see here I'll try grabbing some of these this one looks pretty good actually that one looks pretty good I'll measure that let's see I'm pretty sure that one's yeah that's a keeper that's a good five incher and then um, how's the so with with red rock you could keep the males or females but you want to make sure that it's a hard shell so we're checking for that let's see here That one's of size too. That's a nice one. You can measure that one. Let's see. Just kind of balance that like that. Yeah, this is, yeah, that's like, a, that's a good five and a half inch. That's a really nice one. That's a good red rock. And then just check the shell to make sure it's firm. Check this second leg here. Yeah. I'm squeezing and it's a hard shell so you can either squeeze on uh, the second leg here uh, yeah this the second leg from the claw squeeze this a little bit and check if you want to make sure it's firm or you could you check right here and it's a uh, it's a hard shell so we're gonna put this into the aerator bucket Here's the aerator bucket with all of our crab. We'll throw this in there too. Nice and happy now. Yeah, actually let me check to see the claw right now. Yeah, it's firm. Yeah, it's hard right here. I'm pressing down right here, right where my thumb is, and, and it's a hard shell.
Okay, so we just picked up all the uh, the slip rings, the protocol slip rings that we're using, the two, and we had them over there kind of by the pier, but we kind of moved them further out. Uh, now they're kind of out in this area over here. Uh, they're kind of by this uh, flag of ours. And uh, we were getting crab over there, but all the Dungeness crab that we were getting were actually soft shell. Uh, we actually got two large male soft shell crabs. And we also got one uh, female crab, but that female crab was, I mean, aside from being female, so we had to throw it back no matter what, but it was very undersized. But the two crab that were uh, very good size were, were males, but the, the shells when we pinched uh, the second leg and then the body was just slightly soft. It wasn't like really soft or squishy, but when you did squeeze it, it, it did give, uh, it was a little spongy, so. Uh, you have to throw those back. Anything soft shell you have to throw back, whether it's dungeon or red rock crap. But we're sitting here. Uh, Kat made us a nice tuna fish sandwich with some focaccia bread. She's eating some right now. We also got some packed, some uh, sour cream and cheddar uh, ruffles with some ch uh, popcorn Cheetos, the spicy ones. Uh, so we got some good snacks going on. We just set all of our pot pots right now, so we're just gonna let them sit for a little bit. Um, and then have lunch and then pick them up again uh, after we're done. Hopefully, hopefully we get some crap when we're done eating. Okay, here we are pulling up our protoco pot. Uh, we recently just pulled uh, the other one, the smaller version of it, and we had four crabs, two uh, dungeness and two rock crab, but they were all undersized. And then the dungeness were um, females anyways. So hopefully we'll have some better luck with uh, this pot here. heavy but I think that's just the pot this is the bigger pot so it's like well by 20% heavier than that first smaller pot it's like the, some of the red rock looks like uh, keepers in there there's some dungeons but they're all small it's just nice to see a a yeah. pot full of crab, crab though, no you know, like. That's very true. Alright, start yeah. assessing. So these are the Dungeness. These are uh, small. Whoa. <laughs> oh, I got my thumb. Quick. Okay. At least this crab looks good. It's a nice red rock. Nice and clean. Yeah, this is well past. This is almost five and three quarter inches. And it's a nice hard shell. This is a good keeper right here. Okay, that, this is a nice one for the aerator. And then and, uh, just got to get rid of the rest of these. Uh, okay, so this is the third time we're going to be setting our crab keeper pot. It's the Easy Puller crab keeper pot. And we got salmon head and some chicken in there. And catching a lot of crab. Uh, they haven't all been keepers, but we're happy with how it's fishing.
So we're pulling up the Easy Puller Crab Keeper Pot. All the crabs actually been in that other area over there, so we might pull it this time and then drop it for a really quick 30 minutes so and then seeing how fast uh, it can fill up. But let's see how it did over here. It seems like all the crabs have been really a lot closer to the piers, the last ones that we've been doing, especially now that it's a flood tide. And we're in uh, 53 feet of water, so we're not too deep. How you guys doing today? Oh, not bad. What are you guys fishing for? Oh, flounder. Oh, nice. Sand dabs. Oh, cool. Because we have a pot over there. Oh, okay. is that right? And, uh, let's see if we can get away from you a little bit. Oh. Almost there. Definitely nice having a pop bowl if you had one. Some nice. big ones in here. I just like seeing the pot come up oh, with man. stuff. Don't you? Yeah. Okay, so we're just sorting through these crab that we got in the Easy Polar Crab Keeper pot. And here's a female dungy, it's too small anyways, but if I see these crab, there's another small crab. It's another female. Let me see here. Gotta be careful, these, these, these guys can really get you hard. Look at these ones, they're like almost out. And there it goes. Check this one. This good looking dungeon right here. This looks like a hard shell. It's a, it's a, it's a male crab because of a narrow abdomen here. And, oh! Just under. Look at this. I mean, that's maybe a, an eighth inch short. And of course, it's going to be a hard shell. Yeah, it's hard shell. That was almost a keeper right there. That was a nice one. Here's another one. Dungy. Is that the female? Yeah, this one's small. This one. Uh, it's a nice little red rock right here. Hard shell. It's a hard shell. Is over five inches. We might keep that one. We'll see. Uh, here's another one. This one's in the shape of the same shell. That one's almost out. Let me see. I'm gonna try to grab this dungeon right here. Ooh, this boy's big. This is a male. This is a big old, this is a big old crab right here. Look at that. That's huge. Woo! Thing's huge. Let's see the size on this. And that's way over. That's a good. That's a good uh, seven-inch crab right there. That thing's a monster. Soft, huh? It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Stop playing. It's hard, baby. It's a keeper. Sweet. It's a keeper. Look at that. Nice hard shell. So we're squeezing the second leg right here. And if it's soft, then that means it's a soft shell crab, you need to throw it back. That means it's just molted and you have to wait for the shell to harden. And you kind of don't want to keep it anyways because uh, the meat's a lot uh, mushier inside and it's not completely full on the inside either. But when it's a hard shell, then, then you know it's a nice full crab and the meat's going to be nice and firm. And this is a nice keeper. It's a beautiful keeper right here. What did that measure at again? Man, this is a solid seven inches. Look at that. Six and a quarter. You see where the wow. six and a quarter is? It's a monster. Nice. This is 
Okay, so we just picked up all the pots and we are headed home. The sun is setting, it's beautiful right now. And again, we don't have any running lights, so we gotta get in soon. So we're gonna be making our way home back to the port. Girl.